Okay, so this card is an NVIDIA GeForce 8800 GTX Overclock Edition. This is a very, very, very powerful card for its time, but it's also a very, very big space heater. Uh, and over here in the uh, right corner, we got an NVIDIA GT610 with the custom, of course, the custom uh, GPU heatsink modification I made. I stuck on an ATI Radeon GPU logo. Anyhow, the whole point of this video is to talk about exactly what you can expect out of performance between these two when it comes to running. So the whole point is uh, a lot of people actually prefer using these old school cards for their workstations instead of little dinky cards that can handle a lot more. And I'm just going to go over some of the specs here. Okay. Listen. The overall result is I did some benchmarking between these two cards. Now this card is overclocked a full... I believe it's a full like 500 megahertz. So to be fair, I overclocked the GT610 a full 500 megahertz. Well, I got about 475 before it became a little bit unstable. So to compare these cards, uh, what I basically did was I put both of these in my main workstation, as you can see over there, my testing bench. And uh, what I did was I ran some low-end titles, and the reason why I ran some low-end titles is because this card was one of the first DirectX 10 GPUs you could buy. That's the first DirectX 10, so keep in mind, that's pretty old. This is a DirectX 11 GPU. Obviously, it's old school, but it is a DirectX 11 GPU. And it's not that old as a GT610. It's old, but not that old. A lot younger than this, though. Um, so here's my results, okay? Tested both of them out in Minecraft. I got a total of... Average frames with this, uh, with the average frames with this card, I got about 55. Minimum frames was 17, and maximum frames was 75. <laughs> the GT610 dominated. With the extra overclock that I applied to it, it completely blew the, the uh, 8800 away. It scored a maximum frames of 250, a average frames of 125, and minimum frames of 80. So, even for a low-end graphics card, for its time, it just annihilated the 8800. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this is because a lot of people like to use these cards in workstations. As a matter of fact, a lot of older cards, a lot of older workstations, such as the uh, workstation I'm using right now is pretty old to record this video. It's a uh, Dell Precision 670, or if you get a, like, a, uh, a Dell, like, my Dell, this... Graphics card came out of my Dell Precision T3400. I obviously replaced it. This is not a suitable card for something that I'm going to be doing. So, basically, uh, I pulled these out of working systems, but some people, they upgrade their systems, but they say, oh, the video card looks fine. It looks like a powerful card. It doesn't need replacing. Well, I'm just showing you, like, even options that can get you on the cheap, because if, you're, if you use a workstation, and odds are you use, a pro you use programs that rely a lot on GPU performance, you're going to at least need something, especially Premiere. Premiere, whenever it can, uses the GPU uh, memory as a scratch disk, as well as it also uses the GPU as a second coprocessor to help render videos faster on the spot. So if you have a good GPU, you can render some videos pretty fast. So if you ever want to get like build a little video editing rig, uh, use one of these, these GT610s or even the GTX... Uh, 720s, they're not expensive. These are like 24 bucks. I've seen these go for about 50 bucks nowadays. Uh, the whole point of this video is these things generate so much power and so much heat compared to the power output. This card right here used a minimum, a maximum of 60, of 60 to like 55 watts. This card reached 190 watts and it barely performed the way it should. The point is, you should honestly use something more powerful as well as more efficient in your system. Because that thing, it takes up so much power, it's not even justified. Anyhow, that was pretty much the whole point of this video. I just wanted to show you guys that these cards, these cards are fairly affordable. You look up GT610 on eBay or on Amazon, I bet you you can find these for about 19 bucks at, at minimum. And a good average like 20 bucks, 20 or 30 bucks. Anyhow... I just wanted to share this video with you guys because I figured some people might find this interesting to see uh, what a newer DirectX 11 GPU, low-end, like 
like the lowest of the low of DirectX 10, or DirectX 11, could compare to the highest of the high DirectX 10. That was the whole point of this video. Thank you for watching, car rate, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.